Hi, I'm Mark, and I'm one third of Trading the Market. In today's video, we're looking at laying the card. This is a beginner's horse racing strategy used by pro traders. So let's get into this video. You may know or even use the lay in the field strategy. I've always found this to be very hit or miss, and because of this, I tend to stay away from just having a blanket rule for each race. Instead, I take much more of a mathematical approach to laying horses. Once you understand how to use this strategy and some simple rules to which you can apply to different races, then you'll be able to set up a complete day's worth of trading before the first horse sets off. The idea of this strategy is to lay each horse in a race card at the same price. So if we're looking at a 12 horse race, we want to be placing 12 trades, one on each horse and all of them lay bets. Now there's only ever one horse that can win a race, this means that we're only ever going to lose one trade if it all goes wrong, so minimises the risk. It's why I like this strategy so much. The question you'll all be asking is, how do we make the money? Well, let's get into this video. So let me explain the strategy. We structure the trades for an in-play to allow us to get matched at odds that multiple horses can be matched at. Depending on the price we're asking for, requires different number of horses to be matched to make a profit. So the first thing we need to do is look at setting the lay price. This is done by deciding on a few factors. Distance of the race, number of horses that are racing, race type, and the spread in the field. Now let me explain. So let's start with the distance. The longer a race is, the more time there is for horses to spread out. In order for this strategy to work, we need as many as horses as possible, competing to win in the last two furlongs to maximize our profit. So sprint races over 5 furlongs to 1 mile 2 furlong provide more profit than say a 3 mile race. Now under the same principle, in order to match as many horses as possible, we need more horses. So a race with 14 horses will provide you with a better chance of getting matched than a race with 4 horses in it. So larger races provide the chance for a larger profit. It's important to consider the type of race, where is it a sprint or a flat, or if they're going over obstacles like fences and hurdles. Any jump races poses the risk of falling, and with each horse that falls, there are less horses that are in the race. Sometimes this will work in your favour, if the favourite is 10 lengths clear and falls at the last, then you'll get another match, but let's not hope for horses falling, that's not how this works. Last of all, the spread of the field. This is the price from the favourite to the price of the outsider, and all the gaps in between. I mean by this, if a race has a clear backed winner, say at 1.81, and the next horse is at 5.5, then it's unlikely to be a profitable race. Remember, you're trading against other people, so we're looking at what they will believe will happen, as this is what they will trade on. If there is a clear winner in a race, and there are a couple of lengths back behind the front runner, people are not going to be smashing the price on the front runner, so you need to pick a race where the market doesn't believe there is a clear favourite. Typically, I look for a to be about five decimals or less spread across most of the race card. Using these factors, it will allow me to pick the best races for this to work. I will decide the price I ask on the lay depending on each race. If I think it will be a close race, and there will be three or four horses that might be contending for the post, then I'll ask for decimal two. Or I'll be looking at 1.75 if it's less likely to match three horses. At 1.75 I only need to match two horses to make a profit rather than needing three horses at decimal 2.0 to make the profit and to break even. Now we have an understanding of the key principles, we can put it into practice. Let's go over to markets. So here we're looking at the Chepstow 7 minutes past 2 race. It's 3 miles, 6 furlongs, 130 yards and it's going in about 18 minutes. So we're going to start picking the horses. Um, and we're going to start putting lay trades on each horse so if I select all the lay boxes on each and every horse in the race and I go over to the cog in the corner make sure I've got timing forced on place my stake in this case it's going to be £10 at 1.75 change the box underneath to keep in play this is important as we want the trades to remain in play as if you don't do this when the event goes into play it will cancel all your trades and you'll have to replace. So it's important if you're going to do it beforehand in order to make sure that box is checked. So as I work my way down the list, I'm going to keep doing each individual horse and keep making sure I hit that in play. It is important to know that on markets, if a horse is reduced, which means a horse has been taken out of the race, 
that all your trades will be cancelled because this is considered to be a significant difference into the race as there is yet another runner not running and this will affect your trade and possibly trade price so it will cancel all your trades and you will have to relay it's one of the downfalls with markets i don't yet know of a way of keeping it in play but it is the rules and all we're going to do now is make sure that all our lays are on as you can see they are and then we're going to come back when the race is ready to go as you can see at the top of the screen it's going down so the race is yet to start but on financial outcome we have already been matched and this happens sometimes when there's a glitch in the market and the price drops down uh, we're lucky to get this trade uh, i don't think it'll much matter in the races they're considered to be uh, 11 to 1 outsider uh, but it does help us out because it's one that's already matched so in order to make profit we only need to make one more match in the race so let's get to the uh, off as you can see the race is underway I have cut further ahead into the race as it's a longer race so I didn't want to uh, play the full thing to you but we've still got the financial outcome as a match um, as you can see the lay prices on the right hand side are dropping especially for Dancing Shadow and Goodnight Charlie now I am watching the race um, and Supreme Escape is pushing a bit further on so we're just waiting for that second match which I should imagine would be as financial outcome seems to be wavering uh, as, it, as it runs now so let's just wait for that second match and there we go uh, Supreme Escape has been matched so nice little profit we put a £10 stake on um, it doesn't matter now who uh, who wins the horse race uh, but because our lay was 1.75 we're only laying £7.50 worth of that so we we'd stake £10 on the liability we're actually only risking £7.50 so we've just made 33.33% profit on that race which is a great outcome I tend to trade a lot higher in the volume of um, staked and laid but for this demonstration I'm making it more realistic to what you can achieve so after that race let's get over to the next one so this is the next race for us it's the 1555 at Sedgefield it's a two mile race uh, 77 yards chase handicap now the race is already in play uh, as it went into in play I laid each horse um, I'm not sure you on here as it made no sense to uh, keep watching me play the lace lay bet just make sure if you're using these markets you keep the in play option on now we're getting close to the end of the horse race here so it shouldn't be long until we get start getting matched as i can see some of the odds are dropping some of the horses will be discounted like uh, ben Brody at the top who's actually failed and got no chance in this race so let's hope for a match quite quickly there we go we're matched on the silver prints so we're just waiting for our second match and we're guaranteed £2.50 profit because we've gone £10 at 1.75 again and there we go our second match so it doesn't matter which horse wins now uh, we could hope for a third uh, but we're happy with two for profit if we do get a third we'll go to the £12.50 profit but uh, as I can see the horse racing is finishing um, we're not going to get another horse match here so I'm quite happy with the £2.50 so as you can see I've set it up again on another race I've gone with the 1625 at Sedgefield another two mile three furlong 188 yard race again I've already set up the lay requests on the right hand side for this particular race I'm probably getting boring now but it's still £10 at 1.75 like I said I would normally use a higher stake um, I probably go in a, probably about 100 uh, on the lay on this so I'll be using £75 to make uh, 25 pound back if I matched two uh, and I'd make 125 pound if I matched three but to keep the odds and the stakes a bit simple and also to make it realistic for you guys trading as well I've brought down the odds to show you what the art of the impossible so now we're just waiting to get matched oh we have been matched on Manila Trump and we're just waiting for our second match uh, and that will give us our profit uh, I am watching all these races, so I am confident that uh, number three is going to get matched. Um, let's wait for it. And there we go, we are matched. So that's given us a profit of £2.50. Um, I can't see anything else getting matched here. 
and I believe uh, Minnesota Trump's going to win this. Um, so let's move on to the next example. Uh, I'm also going to be using some examples on the uh, Bet Angel using the Bet That Market just to show you uh, the difference in markets and setting up uh, on the trades. What you're seeing here is a screenshot of the Bet Angel software. I'm going to show you a video of this in a second. Um, I actually got matched on three horses on this particular race at the 130 at Newbury. Uh, with McTotty winning, I made profit at £12.50, so it was a good little race. Uh, again, it would have been £125 to me at my normal stake. So let's go over to a live race with the Bet Angel software, which I'm not explaining today, but there will be a future video by James explaining the Bet Angel software, and this will allow you to use and the automated feature it's quite simple for laying all bets at once let's go over to that video as you can see they're all entering the stalls now i've uh, got a live race on the screen as it's a stream from another source it would be a bit delayed behind what you've seen on the left which is the actual market i've already set it up for in play so my lay stake is 10 pound at 1.75 and with one click of a button once it goes in play i will be able to stake all of my bets all in one go this is the advantage of using something like bet angel as it allows you to lay multiple trades or automation on all horses in one go now i think they're going to go off here so just bear with us one moment and there you go they're off on the market so i've pressed in lay all and as you can see there's a bit of delay between the race and the market so this is a relatively short race so it won't take long to complete uh, we just need to get two or more horses to match for profit we'll get profit at two but at the two pound fifty if we did this at decimal two we would require three horses to get profit two would only break even if we did this with decimal 1.5 we would require two horses to match in order to take profit and it does minimize our risk i think having that blanket of a decimal to lay the entirety of the field doesn't work um, as a proper strategy because of the amount of horses that you need to get matched in the examples we used so far we've only had one race where three horses are matched but uh three more horses do get matched quite often i'm just saying uh, you get a better strike rate at 1.75 if it looks like to be a clear winner uh, from the very start and you think it's going to go wrong you do have the chance to then press cancel or remove your trade uh, and that will stop avoid any bet that you've put on and that will reduce your risk of losing any money so it's always important to watch the races in play as i do right so they're now coming to free out which is uh, where they'll start taking the horse off the bridle we've been matched already on one on invite but um, I think from my live stream, I think Regent's looking quite strong here. So we'll wait until it comes through. Yep, we've been matched on Regent. So it doesn't matter which horse wins now. Uh, we've made £2.50 profit. Um, and we'll just wait for the race to be over. But uh, yeah, and then we'll collect our profit. To summarise, laying the card is not a blanket strategy. It is there to be used as a strategy with variables. So rather than looking for the lay at the two and match three horses for profit, two to break even, we are using different variables in order to allow us to get a profit, albeit smaller, but on more races, which gives you a better strike rate. I'm achieving a strike rate of about 88% currently on races. Uh, I do prefer the sprint races with closer horses as I tend to get four or five matched and I do tend to use larger, larger stakes. Remember when you're laying at decimal two, you're laying exactly what you stake. So if you put £10 down at decimal two, you're going to be risking £10. If you put £10 down at 1.75, you're risking £7.50 and if you put £10 down at 1.5, you're risking £5. Which means if only one horse gets matched, 
the most you can lose is either £5, £7.50 or £10 depending where you set your decimal. Uh, I do advise if you're quite unsure to set it at 1.75. You will get still get matched as much as you do at the two uh, in closer races but your likelihood of losing your initial stake on only getting matched on one is a lot lower. Uh, tweak it for different courses, tweak it for different horses and if you're unsure um, please drop us a comment below and we'll get back to you. So as you can see this is a refresh of an old strategy that didn't have a great strike rate. So all that's left is for me to say if you enjoyed this video why not consider subscribing. It costs nothing to do and helps us out loads. We provide all this for free so why not hit that like button, the notification bell and if you have any questions drop them in the comments and we'll get back to you. I've been Mark, this has been Trading the Market and until next time, happy trading.